a professional artist here in San Francisco and also just happen to be dyslexic. Having discussions about dyslexia is difficult because it's such a personalized thing. One person's experience can be very different to another person's. It's that people with dyslexia have learned to sequester their feelings out of fear of being considered inadequate. I wouldn't go as far as saying that they feel shame, but people with dyslexia are highly intelligent and feel that this learning disability is a knock on their personal perception of their own intelligence. As a young kid in first or second grade, it became apparent I was having trouble keeping up with reading and reading comprehension. As it was described to me by my parents, I showed a lot of enthusiasm for books, but something wasn't clicking when the books were changing from more picture-based to more the printed word. Now, I don't want to frame this as some sort of sad or pity me situation because it isn't that. Everyone has obstacles in life, and lots of people rallied behind me. Through the advocacy of my parents and teachers, the cash-strapped Albuquerque public school system caught on quickly, got me tested and diagnosed with scotopic sensitivity syndrome. That was the beginning of a lifetime of mysteries and self-discovery that dyslexia can obfuscate for an individual. ADHD is a very common secondary feature to dyslexia, and I wonder how much of it was more of frustration with the inability to fit into the standards of a cookie-cutter education system than an actual lack of focus. My word is unpacking. Over time, I've realized that this conceptual activity relates to just about all my interactions with the outside world. It's highly involved with my dyslexia. The printed page to me can look something like television static, where one letter is clear and all the other letters are vibrating and moving. The words must be unpacked or untangled. It is a way to decipher and organize logically out of seemingly complete chaos. Small things like an imperfection in type where a tiny bit of ink has seeped into the fiber of paper, breaking the shape of a letter, or being able to see the bruising of the type from the back page through to the front, or glare, or lighting in the room, or font choice, or type size, or even a simple smudge. All of these things can spin me off into a psychedelic moray journey, which, to be honest, I actually kind of love and play with frequently in my artwork. This is where artwork steps in, finding a refuge and a step-by-step -step route through unpacking in order to achieve a clear message of expression gives me a sense of profound personal achievement, peace, and the satisfaction that indeed my intellect, my dyslexia, and my path have led to a place where I wouldn't be me without it. The Dyslexic Dictionary Project to me is an effort to help build a community of dyslexic people, a place where people who have grown up with it can share their experience of how they operate in order to help younger people recognize common patterns, recognize certain behaviors, and show that there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. In fact, there are distinct advantages. Just ask our governor. It can easily be an isolating and humiliating place, but no one will ever be able to get inside of your head to understand you unless you find the tools to set it free. So let's do that together. There's so much potential out there. It's in everyone's interest to coalesce around and energize the unique thinking of this clump of humanity. Because the contributions of these people historically have been provided outside of the box, humble and honest progress that really changes things. This ongoing project, I believe, seeks to end the isolation and open up the conversation of what people have managed to do in spite of and in concert with their unique perspective as people with dyslexia. So please feel welcome to the Dyslexic Dictionary.